down below for the amazing programs of Building Your Wealth expires. Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Yesterday, we heard Donald Trump read a scripted message from his speechwriters and attorneys in a pre-recorded taped message that he read from a teleprompter. He didn't apologize for the infamous attack on the 6th. He didn't sympathize with the now five dead people, including a Capitol Police officer. He didn't take responsibility for inciting violence. Now, on one hand, it makes sense. If his attorneys had any say in the writing of the speech, they wouldn't want him to take liability. But his scripted message did have a very presidential tone. He talked about unity. He talked about how this is a time for calming and tempering the frustrations of the election. While he didn't officially use the C word, concede, he did talk about a peaceful transfer of power to the next administration coming in on the 20th. He also seemed to put the election loss behind him and put the tenseness of all of the disputes behind him. And it somewhat felt like we were now able to turn the page to a new chapter a new beginning. He did leave us with a cliffhanger that there will be a future Donald Trump chapter, that his movement is only just beginning, but his speech was, or statement, was very presidential. It almost seemed like it took a little bit out of the Biden playbook of calling for a period of calming and unity, which is something that Biden says in almost every speech. Now, a lot of us don't believe that Donald Trump believed a single word that he said when he said it, but at least he said it. It was certainly a step forward and not a step backward. And I don't think any of us, whether we're Republicans or Democrats, could disagree with that. Uh, and this is despite the fact that yesterday when I shared it and I shared a little bit of commentary on it, I had to deal with commentary like this. Kevin, you are an idiot. I'm unsubscribing and your channel sucks. Democrat POS, Trump 2020, and beyond. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, this was right after Roberto said, um, I smell a Trumper. I am unsubscribing right away. Apparently, staying in the middle means I lose people on the left and right. But anyway, back to this message. While I am upset that uh, Donald Trump incited these riots, and I will never forget what happened on Wednesday the 6th. We have a over 10 hour video. Many of us spent the entire 10 hours together going through all of the madness as it broke. That has almost a million views now, but anyway. I personally did think after hearing this message from Trump that if Donald Trump could just keep his cool for the next 13, 12 days now, our nation could move forward. Maybe, maybe even more unified than before. We even talked about how Maybe Donald Trump will just go to Camp David like, like he was planned to go to Camp David, and every message he puts out will be curated. Well, I was wrong. I was really wrong. It took less than 15 hours for Donald Trump to relapse. Not only have we had more resignations in his staff despite calls from Republican senators and representatives begging people to please stay at the White House, more and more Republicans are resigning, or staff members are resigning. Larry Kudlow did say he was going to stay on the Trump administration, or as part of the Trump administration, but he said he was going to maximize all of his vacation days for the remaining 12 days and he would be on vacation. So it seems like people are either resigning or going on vacation to stay away from Donald Trump at this point. We also know that in Donald Trump's speech yesterday, he said that the National Guard was immediately brought out to help quell the issues. We know this is not true. So even though his message overall sounded positive, we know there were still some untruths in what he said. We know that there are at least many reports that Donald Trump delayed in sending the National Guard, that he didn't want the optics of the military, essentially, even though the National Guard is different from the military. He didn't want the optics of military personnel coming to the Capitol. It took uh, Mark Meadows calling on Ivanka Trump and Pence to try to convince Donald Trump to finally authorize the National Guard as one of the reasons why it took two and a half hours for the National Guard to respond thanks to chain of command issues over at the Pentagon where they were told, no, the National Guard's not allowed to have munitions, weapons, riot gear. No, they can be on standby outside the perimeters of the city. But that's it. We also know that Mitch McConnell's wife, who works as a Trump cabinet member, resigned. 
And we also know that Mitch McConnell says he never wants to speak to Donald Trump again, which also makes us wonder, does this mean that maybe there is a path for Donald Trump to get convicted in the Senate? We know that House Democrats, probably some House Republicans as well, do expect to vote on impeaching Donald Trump at the middle of next week. Personally, I always wonder what takes so long, but House Democrats uh, will have a caucus call today and they will plan an impeachment vote for either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday of next week. The Senate is technically not back in session until January 19th, but Mitch McConnell seems pretty pissed. Mitch McConnell could call the Senate back to hold a trial and convict. After all, Donald Trump did not stay quiet like we expected. See, I ran a Twitter poll yesterday. Yesterday, I said, 24 hours later, what do you think is most likely regarding Trump's last 12 days? Remember to follow me and vote on these polls at Real Meet Kevin on Twitter. 18% of you out of 3,600 votes said impeachment. Only 8% of you said the 25th Amendment removal. This is because most of us by now expect Mike Pence is not going to invoke the 25th. 62% of us said nothing. Trump goes quiet. And 12% said another incitement. Well, yesterday after Donald Trump's message, you couldn't be blamed for thinking, hey, after his message, maybe, maybe there is hope that Donald Trump is progressing in a calming direction. Unfortunately, that lasted less than 15 hours, and Donald Trump has already relapsed. And again, this is not a Republican message. This is not a Democratic message. This is just a message providing what happened, what we expected, and what Donald Trump is saying now. I'm going to let you make your own conclusion. This is Donald Trump's message this morning. This is the first message after Donald Trump provided this speech where you could see he's clearly reading, and he doesn't seem particularly happy that he has to read this message. Anyway, the first tweet since then. The 75 million great American patriots who voted for me, America first, and make America great again, will have a giant voice long into the future. They will not be disrespected or treated unfairly in any way, shape, or form. Three exclamation points. This is clearly a sign that what Donald Trump said about unity yesterday was a forced statement, which we knew. Let's not kid ourselves. We knew it was written for him. We knew we didn't want to say it, but at least it was the right thing to say. Again, it was a step in the right direction. However, all this talk about unity, which I have to say the talk about unity really sounded like a piece out of Biden's playbook because that's what he says in every one of his messages. Now, whether or not you agree with Biden, that's not the discussion we're having here. And I'm not making a statement to that regard either. But they had a similar tone for a brief moment. Now we are back to ununity or division, or divisiveness. 75 million Americans are great patriots. Everybody else isn't mentioned. 75 million Americans will not be disrespected or treated unfairly in any way, shape, or form. The other Americans are not mentioned. But that's not all. There is a long-standing tradition that presidents who leave power attend the inauguration of the president coming into power. Donald Trump acknowledged that there would be an administration change on the 20th, and again, he didn't concede, he didn't say the word concede, but he essentially said what he needed to make it clear that there will be a peaceful transfer of power, and he will be leaving the White House, and there will be an inauguration and a new administration on the 20th. Well, Donald Trump had to make it also very clear. To all those who have asked, I will not be going to the inauguration on January 20th. So, I have two questions now. Number one, were you expecting this or were you expecting Donald Trump to stay quiet, temper, and, and remain calm through the 20th? Or were you expecting this to happen? I guess I also have a bonus question. Have you used that coupon code down below to build your wealth? <laughs>